What's up guys, welcome to another episode. So this video is gonna help you guys out if you guys wanna work out your suspension and you wanna upgrade it to make it be a little bit better. So whether you drive your car or you spin your tires or you just like to drive it hard from time to time, the stock bushings and the suspension components will eventually degrade and wear over time and it'll also wear out your tires too much for no reason. If you've ever experienced wheel hop or even just a you know not nice steering wheel feel, like a really hard vibration, that is due to your lower control arm bushings. Now more often than not, when you swap those out for usually just regular OEM ones, the feeling does go away, but it's still not perfect. The rubber problem is still going to come back and you're still going to have issues with that steering and your suspension. So if you try and do a launch or a burnout or spin your tires and then you feel this very aggressive vibration through the car, that is the wheels moving forwards and backwards inside the wheel well. Now the soft rubber bushings found in your control arms, it's going to allow for some sort of deflection. So if you're working with an OEM kind of car, you're looking for something kind of comfy, that's where you're going to find that. But if you're looking for something more performance oriented that has no deflection, that is what is going to be happening today in this video. I'm going to be installing something on my cord and it's going to be super nice. With my camera strapped to my front wheel drive car, you can see the front wheels on my Honda rolling as I drive. Now with the car driven rather normally, you can see that there's nothing really out of the ordinary. When I turn the steering wheel, the wheels obviously turn. When I go over bumps, you can see the wheel move up and down as it should. But the cause for concern is seeing the wheel move forwards and backwards inside the wheel well. Now this is extremely noticeable, especially under aggressive driving. So hard accelerations, decelerations, and cornering, you'll find this sort of deflection characteristic in your suspension. So during a pull, you can see the wheel will physically move forwards in the wheel well under load, and then when the suspension offloads during my gear change, you can see it shifts back to its normal resting state. The same thing happens under hard braking, so the wheel will physically move backwards. Given your bushings have that much deflection, it'll actually set your alignment out of spec. So when you're driving hard, you're wearing them out twice as fast because you're driving aggressively and your toe is going to be out of spec. So if I were to do a launch with traction control turned off and get the tires to spin, the constant loading and unloading, the forwards and rearward movement of the wheel can cause the control arm to break, it can cause the axles to snap, and it will make the rubber bushings fatigue and degrade even more, which makes this even worse as time goes on. The control arms in my car are very tired. They've seen better days as you can tell, and the rubber bushings are torn. So I bought some spherical bushings for the stock Honda control arms. Since I replaced my OEM arms a couple years back for Moog lifetime replacement ones, I don't have the OEM ones. So I got these new Moog ones replaced for me and I brought them down to my machinist to make the holes in the control arms just a tiny bit bigger so that the bushings can press right in. These spherical bushings are to replace the OEM rubber bushings on the body side of the control arm. It doesn't change the lower bushing for the shock body. Since these new control arms are ready to go, I just need to swap them out for the ones that are found in my car. To get that done, begin by zapping out the large bolt going through the front bushing. We're going to need it for the install, so just set it aside for now. Following that, remove the rear bolt securing the control arm to the body. Next up, remove the lower shock bolt along with the end link for the sway bar. On the other end of the control arm, you'll find the ball joint on the spindle along with the cotter pin and a 19mm castle nut. With the cotter pin removed and the castle nut zapped off, you'll need some sort of specialty tool to separate the ball joint from the control arm. Now the tool that I'm using here is from OTC. I'll have the tool set linked in the description box and it's super helpful if you're doing anything kind of suspension related on the front end of your car. Next up, grab a little pry bar and pull the control arm out from the subframe and remove it from the vehicle. To think, these can be driven on and will only get worse over time. These things 100% need to be replaced after showing this amount of cracking. The spherical bushings won't wear like the rubber ones, so they won't show signs and wear like this. As long as you don't physically go off-roading and damage them, they don't really need any kind of servicing. The install is going to be pretty straightforward. Since the design of the arms is the same, but it just now has different bushings, there aren't going to be any curveballs. The only challenging part is going to be aligning the spherical ball joint up to the subframe. But short from that, just reinstall everything in reverse order. One thing to note is that the front large bushing needs two small washers on the bottom side of the bushing to properly align it in the subframe. The washers are included with the purchase of the bushings, so you don't need to source them yourself. 
So using a small pry bar or a flathead screwdriver, lift up the arm to allow the washers to slide underneath the control arm. After that, reinstall all the hardware and torque it all to spec. Regarding the wheel hop and the suspension deflection, the grippier of a tire that you have on your car, the more aggressive it's going to be. So given that I had 200 compound, nice summer tires on the car, and I'm now switching them out to 100 compound semi-slicks, if I were to run those old nasty arms with those bushings, the steering wheel vibration would be so much worse. While I was at it, I also swapped out the NK wheels that were NT03s for NK PF01s that are a slightly less aggressive spec, so they aren't going to poke past my fender. With all the nasty construction still going on on my street, I'm gonna have to make my ways out to some back roads to show you what the bushings paired with these wheels and tires can do. With the camera in the same spot, we should be able to see any deflection if there is any. Just driving the car normal, you're not really gonna notice anything. However, when you start to push on it, you'll be able to see that there's just a hint of deflection, and that could be anything from the deflection from the steel control arms or the aluminum wheels flexing. This tiny amount is not only a huge improvement, but even with these super sticky tires, it means that there's not going to be any wheel hop whatsoever. It also means that the alignment angles aren't going to be put out of spec if I drive the car hard. Now on the note of alignments, my car received an alignment last year with the old rubber control arms, which I'm guessing had a good amount of play in them because at the time, the alignment, everything seemed good. But with these new control arms and these new bushings holding the control arm where it needs to be, you can see that my steering is out of spec. So I'm driving with the steering wheel turned. You can swap out the old rubber bushings for polyurethane ones, which is a good happy medium for where you get a little bit of compliance, but it doesn't wear out like rubber ones. But if you're looking for the best performance possible, the spherical ones are the way to go. Wheel hop is going to be an issue for any kind of platform, whether it's front wheel drive, rear wheel drive, or even all wheel drive. After you swap out your bushings for spherical ones, you still may have a little bit of wheel hop due to play in your subframe. Now on my Honda, the subframe is bolted directly to the chassis, so I don't have that issue anymore. But on my Z, for instance, it has rubber bushings found on the rear subframe. So that means that the subframe can actually move in relation to the body of the car. Now on top of that, you also have other components like the differential that have rubber bushings in them. And if there's any fluid in them or if they're dynamic bushings, that will give you some deflection as well, along with wheel hop. So if you guys wanna have the best upgrade possible, you're gonna want everything super stiff. That way, you're not gonna have the control arms move at a spec, the subframe isn't going to move, the front wheel hop isn't going to be noticeable by any means, and you're gonna be able to throw super grippy tires on your car and it's going to be able to handle it. Why do you think race cars only have solid stuff on their car? There's a reason. So now with these last modifications done on the car, this has allowed me to get my car to the point where I can bring it to an alignment shop, it can get it aligned, and I can also bring it down to my dyno and racetrack to see what kind of lap time I can make with this current setup before I put the new engine in it, and I can also see how much power I'm making by throwing this on the dyno. So I'm curious to see how much power we're gonna be making. I have no clue what the real power number is. I have a couple mods in this car, but it's nothing compared to the fully built engine that I have going in this thing. It should be really fun. I'm really hoping you guys are just as excited as I am for this build. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you guys want to see more of this kind of content, along with following me on my other social media platforms. All that stuff's going to be in the description box. Otherwise, if you have any further questions, comment section down there. You guys know what to do. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.